Hey, Don Copeland here, and today we're going to talk a little bit about one of the things that just uh, seems to drive people crazy about UV printing, and hopefully can uh, shed some light on it, give you uh, some direction, and give you a good idea of what it, what it takes to get things to adhere to the substrates you're wanting to print on. So we like to think that UV printers are kind of miraculous in the fact we can load these things up with just about anything and print it, and we can. The question is, is, is it going to stick? So today we're going to just go through some different types of materials. By no means are we going to cover all the materials that are out there, but to give you an idea of some of the processes, some of the products you can use to come up with better adhesion on different products. First thing we want to do is start out with when you're printing on something, the first thing you always want to do is clean that substrate so that it's going to have no residuals on it, whether it's dust, dirt, metal a lot of times will actually have uh, shavings and whatnot and, and metal dust on it. So you're going to make sure that you clean your substrate. Even, the, even substrates that you know that you get good adhesion to, you still want to clean them. Uh, for instance, we have over here a piece of plastic. This piece of plastic, which is probably some kind of PVC, right? This doesn't say, it's just a sign blank that we bought at something like uh, Michael's or something like that. This piece of material probably is going to give me good ink adhesion, but it's probably got dirt and dust on it. It's been sitting around. In fact, I can see fingerprints on it and whatnot. By the way, oils from your fingers, one of the big enemies. It's not a bad idea to wear gloves when you're handling stuff, even though I'm not. Wipe this down simply with this. We will use, we keep a spray bottle. This is denatured alcohol. All right. You can also use isopropyl alcohol, like 70% or so concentration. Take that, take a smooth cloth, wipe it down. A lot of times what I'll actually do is I'll actually lay this on the bed in the position I want it, and I'll use the, the rag itself that I'm using to wipe it down to also increase my pressure down on it to lay it down on one of the sticky mats when we're going to print on it. So you want to clean the substrate. However, some substrates are going to require a little bit more aggressiveness to it. For this, we keep acetone around, which you can buy in cans. This is one of these cans here. Like this, you can even buy it in gallon cans. This, when you're using it, you absolutely want to make sure you're wearing gloves. You should wear it when you're doing the alcohol. It'll mildly dry your hands out, but the acetone will really dry your hands out. So you do want to wear gloves while you're, again, wiping down the material. For instance, this metal plate right here that we've got, all right, this metal plate would certainly need to be wiped down. In fact, if we wipe this down right now, you'll be amazed the color of the rag as it came off of it. That will re remove all the things. As you can see, this was actually done on a CNC, and they've actually routed out these areas where the plugs are going to go in. And so there's absolutely going to be dust from the steel on this. You want to use initially an acetone to clean that. And then we come to the real bugger. This is a piece of acrylic, all right? And acrylic your temptation is to use the same type of cleaning solution the alcohol to clean that which you can if it's been cut out with like a like a router however if it's been lasered and you wipe this down with isopropyl alcohol or denatured alcohol much to your chagrin the next morning you're going to come in there's going to be fissures and little cracks in this because of the the change in the the actual edge where it's cut with a laser, the heat that's generated, causes it to change and it make, the alcohol actually makes it crack. So what do you do? You can use lacquer thinner, you can use, uh, we have customers who use lighter fluid like you would use to light charcoal. That doesn't cause that, it cleans it up just as well. They're quick evaporating just like alcohol is. So if you're doing a lot of acrylic and you're not sure how it was cut down to the sizes it was in, it's a good idea not to use alcohol and instead to use something like a lighter fluid or like a lacquer thinner to clean it. Now some materials that you may get are going to be UV printable and UV ready. This is a material that we use to print for uh, ADA signs and whatnot on the MUTOs and it meets the compliance of the not being too, it's going to be a low gloss, it's a matte finish and it also has got a side that is treated for UV printing and you'll, it, the way you'll be able to tell that is guess what, there'll be some writing on it, a piece of plastic over the top of it. So what I'm going to do is, once I remove this, I really don't need to clean that because this plastic has been covering it, except for one thing. As I pull that away, I'm probably generating some type of static, which can itself be an enemy to adhesion, okay? And it can also cause 
uh, deflection of your ink so you get not as sharp of edges. So what I would do with something like this is once I peel away the plastic like I did here, lay it in position, and I'm just going to clean it with a, with a lint-free cloth and just good old H2O. H2O, get away any dust that may have settled on it, though that's not likely. But what the water is going to do is it's actually going to knock back the static and you won't have to worry about there being static on it and you're not going to mess with the coating that's on it, which something, some kind of solvent might actually start to dissolve it. So now we've touched a lot of the different substrates. We have other type of substrates that you will print on, again, that they may not be specifically UV ready, but there's a lot of pieces of material on the market that are actually sublimation ready, all right? Our best blank store, they sell a lot of sublimation ready blanks, ornaments, things like that. I've got a couple of them here. This is a name badge. Once again, this had the plastic coating on it, you would peel away as well. I would wipe it down with water, but it's, it's sublimation ready. So guess what? That generally means it's UV ready because even though, like for instance this, this is like a ceramic ornament, right? I think you may have seen one of our videos where we actually printed on these ornaments. These are sublimation ready, okay? It's a ceramic, but it's sublimation ready. What does that mean? It is a ceramic, but you're not printing on ceramic. You're actually printing on the coating, which is put on these items, which is a polyester type of material, which UV inks love to adhere to. Again, you're gonna wipe those down, uh, but no need generally to worry about anything for adhesion other than just getting them clean. This sheet is just a, a thin metal. This is something we did for some samples for a customer, and they're sublimating on, and we printed on it directly onto it. Again, this had a plastic piece we peeled off the front of it, wiped it down with some water, and applied it and printed straight onto it. So even if you have not, you have the material and you know it's ready to be printed on, you want to make sure you clean it off and you want to make sure, especially if you pull a cover sheet off of it, that you're cleaning off, cleaning off the surface of anything that may have settled, but also knocking back the static with it. Another material, got a bunch of, gim bunch of uh, items back here to, to work from, we'll show you very common that people do is this is corrugated plastic uh, brand name a lot of cases you'll think of is Coroplast but there's a lot of different brands of corrugated plastic out there on the market you can get this material from your sign supplier supply warehouse if you tell them that you're going to be printing this with a UV printer what they're going to do is they're going to sell you what is known as a corona treated piece of coroplast. What a corona treatment is, is it's literally, this will be moving along and there's high voltage that this just goes underneath. The high voltage creates an arc across this and it, it literally cleans the surface of any contaminants. It'll also change the surface so that there is, it, it is more print friendly and it gives you a quick thing. Now it does have a lifetime. So generally you want something that's been corona treated within the last six, 60 to 90 days. Uh, so that the, the corona treatment does not wear off and it goes back to its natural state. <clears throat> but just literally when you're ordering these, the easiest thing to do is ask your, your sign supply, say, hey, do you have corona treated core plast so that I can get good prints on it? If they don't, then what you need to do, hopefully it's, it's less expensive without, and get it and then try some type of adhesion promoter, which is another thing we'll talk about here in a minute or two, to clean and or add to the top of the the Coro itself. All right, so moving forward from that, let's look at some other items and how we would treat them. We'll get into the good stuff here shortly. You probably see a, flo a flamethrower over here, so people are getting excited, right? We have items like, for instance, wood. What do I do for wood? Just dust it off, clean it off, wipe it down. Raw wood is always going to be good. As you can see, we printed on the other side of this. We did nothing to this other than just to wipe it off, make sure there was no dust. When you do have wood that's especially raw wood like this, you do want to make sure you just take a wet cloth and just wipe it down. Don't oversaturate it because what will happen is you'll end up doing a really good job of printing on the fine layer of sawdust that's on there and that's eventually going to fall off while the ink is still attached to it. We have items out here that we've printed on. This is a, a ceramic tile. Now, depending on my application for this, if this is just going to hang on the wall, Go ahead and just print on it. You're going to be fine. Wipe it down, clean it with alcohol, put a, a mild adhesion promoter on it, and print it. Now, if this is going to be in a, a more heavy traffic type of situation, you're probably going to want to top coat it, and you're probably going to want to do some type of flame treatment, which we'll show you here in a minute.
tumblers, very popular these days, right? Tumblers come in two forms. This would be a stainless, just a raw metal. And this would be a powder coated. Powder coating is generally good for adhesion. So with these, generally all you want to do is once again, just wipe these down, make sure they're clean. Something like this is you're fine to use uh, an alcohol solution on to clean. Something like this, once again, you want to wipe this down with um, acetone to get it nice and clean. And then you want to put an adhesion promoter on it. We have some different types of adhesion promoters I'm going to jump into here right now and explain to you what you would use. On something like stainless steel, there are specialty type of adhesion promoters specifically meant for metal. This one is called Bowl. It's called Verifix. It is a metal adhesion promoter. You wipe this on, wear gloves, wipe this on in a thin coat, let it air dry a couple of minutes, you print to it, and then if you have any residual that you see on the substrate after the fact, after it's cured, just take a, a cloth with some, some alcohol on it and wipe around that and you'll get rid of any haze that might exist from it. You also can sometimes get away with just using a standard, this is our Compress AP adhesion promoter that's available on Coleman and Company. And this is, works pretty well on the stainless steel once you clean it with acetone. It's not going to work as well as the Verifix, but it's a little bit less expensive as well. And again, it depends on what the application is and how long it's going to be left. If it's something like this, it's probably not going to get washed that frequently. It's probably not going to be as big of a deal. Whereas a cup like this, which you're going to use every day, you're probably going to want to go, if it was pure stainless, we would want to put something like the bowl on it. When it comes to your plastics, there are a ton of different solutions out there for it. Again, we usually start off with our AP. It's a good all-purpose adhesion promoter. Good to put on a lot of plastics that you, you feel like you should have. You will uh, you actually have a list, which we can put up here, of what we have found uh, from an, our experience of what substrates do and don't need adhesion, what type of adhesion, uh, and when you would need to apply them. And the items that are towards the top of the list, which are items which generally have better adhesion, but maybe marginal, you can get away with using the AP. Once again, saturate a piece of cloth, wipe it on, let it air dry. If that doesn't work, then we have our XP, which is our, our other AP that we sell through Coleman & Company. We have found that to work better on some of the harder to do plastics. We also found this interesting enough, it works really well on carbon fiber. So if you're printing anything that's carbon fiber, the XP works exceptionally well on that. On more difficult to adhere plastics, some of these spray like SEP uh, adhesion promoter, or in this case, this is Bulldog. Th literally, you can buy these at auto parts stores because they're used a lot when people are working on cars that have had accidents and they're having to try to repaint. And as you know nowadays, a good part of your car is not metal, it's made out of plastic. And you want the, the ink to adhere to the plastic as well as it does to the metal. So you use these items on it. We use these a lot of times on a little more difficult plastics to adhere to and sometimes in conjunction with other processes and so those are a couple to keep around these are generally pretty uh, heavy duty what I mean is you don't want to spray these in your small contained shop you want to take these into an area where you have good ventilation good circulation or even outside when you spray them let them dry and if you'll read on the, the cans for most of these these usually usually recommend a two-step uh, application clean the substrate spray on let it dry and come back and spray it again before you go ahead and try to print on it. Then you have some general purpose also. This is AP3155 from Supply 55. This is a good uh, general purpose plastic coat. Um, doesn't have the greatest smell. It's, it's one I would recommend you use in a area that's a little bit more ventilated as well. Now let's get to some fun and show you some of the other processes we do that are actual physical processes to improve adhesion. All right, time to have some fun, right? What we want to show you now is uh, one of the processes we would use. Uh, first time we ever used this on a specific item was on flying discs. All right, we don't want to use the Frisbee word, right, because they weren't that brand, but they were basically a simulation of those and could not get adhesion on them to save our lives. Prints looked great on them. Prints would come straight off when we tested them for adhesion. And so we tried different adhesion promoters, moderate success on those, but still getting pretty much full scratch off and full pull off. So the first step we took physically was we took this simple torch, this is just a propane torch, took it, and you literally just back and forth across the substrate, 
and that's going to change the surface and it's now printable. All right. We literally did that to these flying discs, printed them. You had to physically damage the surface of the disc to get the actual print to start to scratch off. Didn't have to use any chemicals or whatnot. You certainly could add a chemical to it on top of that, like one of our APs, to increase your adhesion even better, but there was no need for it from our standpoint to see that happen. Another step that we can take is this, is in the terms to glass. Glass is a difficult product to get a good adhesion to, because if you think about it, what we want the ink to do, we want it to hit to the surface, and we want it to go into the substrate itself. So, if you think about your car, when your car is newly waxed, what happens when it rains, right? The water beads up on top of it and it rolls off. It doesn't bite in. When your car hasn't been waxed in a while, like mine hasn't, when it rains, the water tends to settle into the surface of the car. That's actually called wetting, which is what you want when you print. So if you think about glass, what happens when you pour water on it? Put a liquid on it. It's going to beat up and roll off. So we have to do something to change that. The easiest thing to do for glass to get a good adhesion short of doing something physically to it, like etching it with a laser, is to get a handy little kit like this. Now, these can. this is just a, a hand kit we use for testing. This is actually a, a, a flame torch, almost like a brulee torch, right? And then we're not going to have brulee, Hannah, sorry. Sorry to break your heart. And then this is an adhesion promoter as well that goes on after the fact. This is not just sheer butane or something like that. It's actually a material called pyrosil, and as it burns, it's leaving a residual on the surface of the glass. And we're going to come back and hit it with the pyrosil liquid pretreatment. And you'll physically see, you can actually see a change of the surface of the glass. Now you can also get big systems that have a big fan type of flame that you can spin the glass through. They, there are all kinds of levels of treatment for these. Then it's simply a matter of getting some of the, the treatment onto a brush. I'm just gonna brush it on. Again, let this dry. And you can come back and if there's any residual on it, you can clean it up very easily with alcohol. Let that air dry and you're ready to print. With this type of treatment, it's not recommended that you do this too, too soon ahead of time because now that surface is very, very attractive to junk, all right? Things are going to stick to it. So if you let this sit around overnight and you have any dust in the room, it's going to settle out on the surface of the glass and you have defeated the purpose of the, the flame treatment with the pyrosil. One last step here we're going to show you, and this is my favorite. We mentioned earlier Corona treatment. Corona treatment's used large, for large flat sheets that, that you can run the material underneath of it, which all works well and good unless your substrate doesn't have to be naturally flat. This is, a, this is actually an example from one of our customers that actually make these components for the airline industry. These are, you probably recognize these like for your seat, part of your, uh, your table tray in front of you. And the way that they treat these, and this is a, uh, I think these are injection molded. They may be thermoformed. When they make the, use these type of plastics to generate these things, they, they will put into the plastic mix itself um, materials or chemicals that make them flow better, so they flow into the mold. They'll also put into them materials that make them release from the mold. I like to use the example of the difference between pancakes and waffles. It's basically the same batter. You, if you were to take a pancake batter, put it into your waffle iron, go to lift it up to get your waffle out, you're not going to be seeing the waffle when you look down because the waffle is going to be stuck to the top, right? So what do you do? You take pancake batter, you put, you put oil into it. So that way when you go to lift your pancake iron up, the waffle releases, all right? Same process with these. If not, you'd have this piece of plastic stuck in the mold and wouldn't be able to get it out. That's all well and good when it comes to the process of manufacturing these, but when you want to embellish these and print onto these, you don't want oils and these other chemicals floating around on the top that are going to prevent it from giving us good adhesion. So what we have here, this is called a plasma treatment machine, all right? It's a smaller version of like corona treatment. You can see it has a couple of electrodes right there, and those are actually going to form an arc that we're going to use 
to clean the surface off. Turn it on, it's forced air, so you can hear. And then you literally are just gonna pass this over the surface and it's going to physically burn off or evaporate away all of those foreign matter that's on there that can cause the material, the ink to not bond to the substrate the material. And you'll see it doesn't melt the material. It's now changed and ready to be printed. Again, you can use that in conjunction with other types of treatment as well to give better adhesion, but this is what they use physically on these to go into airlines. So it's a pretty, pretty solid process for this type of material. Something like this, not overly expensive. It's not chump change, but when you look at what you've invested into your UV printing equipment, anywhere from low 20s to, you know, on large machines, over $100,000, right? One of these machines is right around $6,000 to do treatment. You can have them with multiple heads on them. You could actually even set them up so that they could act like a corona treatment where you could slide things over by having multiple heads at a time. But the real benefit to this with the wand type of approach is I can hit areas that aren't flat, that are dimensional and whatnot. So that's how you would deal, another way to deal with adhesion. Last one I haven't mentioned is to physically change the surface through manual processes. And the most common way to do that is if let's say you had a material you were gonna print on that you're marginal on your, your adhesion, but you're gonna print the whole surface of it, literally something as simple as sanding it with a light sandpaper will create a rough surface, which will give you a, a place for the inks to purchase to and grab a hold of. You can also do the same thing if you happen to have a laser engraver by etching the materials. You'll see that sometimes when they're working with glass, sheets of glass, they'll actually take and they'll etch the back of the glass print to the back of the glass as a second surface print with the white behind it, you'll never see that it's been frosted by the etching. It gives you great adhesion because you've now created all these fissures and these sections where the, the inks can bite into to adhere. Nickel tour there on what it's about, what adhesion's about, gives you some idea of the different processes, the different steps you, you can take to give yourself better adhesion and more consistent output from your printer happier customers because your inks are sticking to the materials and lasting for a long time. That's it. I'm Don Copeland and this is Adhesion for UV Printers.